at least it's not taken as far as I thought it was. Yet. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for episode 11 of Supernatural Season 14, and oh, I'm actually surprised to say this, but Supernatural has a decent episode uh, kind of streak going on here. This episode wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. There's admittedly maybe two things in here that are a little bit disappointing, um, but otherwise this is still a decently written episode. And it kind of concludes unclimactically a arc that had started, and that is with Nick. Nick, as we saw, somehow survived being stabbed in the heart by an Archangel Blade. They still haven't explained that bullshit, but I noticed how they didn't bring it up at all. Because I know that they're like, this is so stupid, we can't explain this bullshit, so we're just going to leave it and never talk about it again. He found the demon who killed his family, Abraxia or whatever. Turned out that Mary Winchester, this is how they shoehorn her into this episode, she apparently captured the demon but you couldn't kill it but she put it in a box. Like I said, this isn't the most brilliant of episodes. So what we see is that Nick comes to the town that where Mary lives who just so happens to have oh he doody a cop there. She actually finds him there's a little bit of a tussle. He almost loses, but he, he gets like a, a legitimate win in there. At first I thought that was gonna like, yeah, I'm a cop. Let me just turn my back to the criminal. This, this isn't bad screenwriting. Thankfully it doesn't fall like that. And then he captures Mary, and there's actually a bit of an interesting interaction between Nick and her because we see that he's a human, but he has the sort of violent mentality of Lucifer, but he is just a guy who's hell-bent on getting answers about what happened to his family, and they did what I was really hoping they wouldn't do, and Abraxia says that he was ordered by Lucifer to do it. And honestly, I feel that just ruins the whole idea of what Lucifer's plan was with Nick, or lack thereof. The idea that Nick was just a guy who was just having a really bad shitty day. Nothing to do with any sort of prophecy or fate or anything like that. His family just got brutally murdered and Lucifer's like, hey, I've got a sap here who is literally a walking, breathing depression wheel. Let's take him for a spin. Honestly, that was what I liked about it. I liked that idea that he was just a random target. And again, kind of playing kind of playing back into the whole idea of mental illness and mental depression that anyone can be subjected or can fall prey to the worst devices. And it depends on how strong you are and the people who are around you that can pull you back from it. But no, apparently it's just fate that this guy with a terrible name. On the other side, we see that Dean is making himself a sarcophagus to trap him and Michael inside this thing because apparently he says that with Michael getting loose, the world ends. I don't know, dude, because you, you, you caught him earlier. Like, that didn't take much effort to capture him in the first place. The interactions between him, his mom, and his brother actually were pretty good. I Admittedly, this is a road that we've been down many a time before, obviously. But the writing, it's... They're literally trying, they're grasping the last strand of somewhat originality to this conversation that we've seen a hundred times over and over again. We see that Sam agrees to helping Dean with this plan. Obviously, it won't play to fruition, and now that whole hope of me thinking that this was going to be the last season has been vanquished, but... It's not a bad interaction. Nick's story, while a bit of a unsatisfying end, has come to an end. And I noticed something too. They did not bring up that bullshit with the Lucifer coming out of the empty because I swear to God, if they actually commit to that, the entire world of screenwriters will groan when you've brought back a villain for the fourth time. Fucking four times. If anyone says, Lucifer's gonna be just as much of a threat, if not more. I have very many bad words I would want to say to you, but I'm just gonna say, that's not how screenwriting works. 
when you've defeated a villain four times, it's not going to be as interesting. You think that if Thanos had lost four times and then been like, yeah, I'm going to get it this time, you would believe it? No, because it's called bad screenwriting. Either way, this episode's not too bad. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 7. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Also doing a shout-out once again for Camp Death 3 in 2D, which comes out very soon on Amazon Prime, February 16th, if I'm correct. So make sure to check out their Facebook page. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. It was a Canadian horror movie, really bad, but very good, bad, and doing a shout-out for these guys and helping support them. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time.